Welcome back to the cell ship. In this sketch, we'll be taking a closer look at the structure of the ship to see what holds together this, um, uh, scientific marvel. Spoiler alert, it's definitely not giant spiders. Anyways, this sketch is all about the structure and function of the cytoskeleton, so let's get rolling. The cytoskeleton is a collection of protein bundles found in every eukaryotic cell that protects the cell, transports cellular materials, and assists with cell division. The cytoskeleton is comprised of three major components, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. We'll be reviewing each of these in more detail, so let's start small with the microfilaments. We've represented microfilaments with thin rods of rebar reinforcing the space station. Microfilaments are made up of polymerized chains of the protein actin. These structures resemble rods and are solid all the way through, sort of like these micro rods of rebar. Most microfilaments are found near the plasma membrane, where protection from external forces is most needed. Which leads us to the role of microfilaments. Microfilaments are super strong. They protect cells from physical force because they're extremely difficult to compress or break making them the perfect structure to reinforce the cell membrane. Just like this micro-rebar is protecting the space station from compressing under the force of this high-speed collision. And that, my friends, is why planet Jurassicum is ages behind in the space race. But that's not all microfilaments are good for. Microfilaments also facilitate cellular movement. This myosin-shaped mech, powered by a 3P battery and pulling on the micro-rebar, represents the ATP-powered protein myosin interacting with actin. The protein myosin can use energy from ATP to walk along actin strands in microfilaments. This interaction between actin, myosin, and ATP causes cells to contract. Most notably, this interaction causes muscle contractions. Microfilaments also play a crucial role in cytokinesis, the final step in cell division. After telophase, microfilaments form a ring between the two replicated nuclei. The actin in the ring interacts with myosin and contracts, creating what's called a cleavage furrow. Eventually, the cell is squeezed all the way in and is separated into two new daughter cells. You can see the center of the spaceship is pinched in, like a cleavage furrow, and some more mechs are tugging that micro-rebar to divide this spaceship in two. Uh, I think I need to see a bit more before I decide which side I want to end up on. On second thought, I'll definitely be on the other side. I'd really like to see this spidey ship float into a black hole. Well, anyways, this spider isn't just here to scare the bejeepers out of us. Its silky web represents intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are made of filamentous proteins called keratin, desmin, vimentin, and lamins. They're called intermediate because their width is in between that of a microfilament, which is narrower, and a microtubule, which is wider. You'll find intermediate filaments dispersed throughout a cell. The main role of intermediate filaments is to provide structural support to cells. These filaments can withstand lots of tension, and thus make cells more rigid, Sort of like being wrapped in that silk is making this dude super rigid. Remember when I promised the spaceship wasn't being held together by giant spiders? Oops. I lied. Spidey silk actually holds the ship's mitochondrial power generator and Golgi sorting center in place, as well as all the other departments of the cell ship you can't see. That's because intermediate filaments help keep organelles in place, so that they're not just floating around all willy-nilly in the cytosol. Alrighty, time to tackle the final component of the cytoskeleton, microtubules, which we've represented with these tubes. Microtubules are hollow tubes made of strings of tubulin protein. They are distributed throughout the cytoplasm and help provide structure to the interior of the cell. Microtubules create a network of pathways throughout a cell. Kinesin and dynein, two ATP-using proteins, move along this network in opposite directions to transport vesicles between organelles. In the dining area of the ship, you can see these robo-servers wearing Kingsidin and dynein hats and transporting food in different directions. They should remind you that kinesin and dynein transport cellular material along microtubules. Okay, onto the center zone, er, centrosome. 
The centrosome is a region of the cell near the nucleus that assists in organizing a cell's microtubule network. It is also crucial to the segregation of chromosomes during cell division. Centrosomes contain two churro-shaped structures called centrioles, which carry out most of the centrosome's functions. We've represented centrioles with these tube-filled barrels. Notice they are at right angles to one another. This allows the cell to have a sense of direction, like north and south. Centrioles are made up of a ring of microtubules. Specifically, each centriole contains nine microtubule triplets. This barrel is labeled partition by energizer, with a nine and a three to remind you of nine groups of three microtubules, which, in case you're counting, makes 27 total microtubules. Notice these barrels that drifted all the way to the corners of the cell ship? Well, during cell division, the centrosome duplicates and the two pairs of centrioles migrate to opposite sides of the cells to organize the mitotic or meiotic spindles. These spindles assemble to pull apart duplicated chromatids, so they eventually end up in different daughter cells. As you might have noticed, the tubes coming out of these barrels look a lot like a mitotic spindle forming. It looks like this crew member is connecting tubes to the middle of the chromosome-shaped kinetic core which represents none other than the kinetochores. Kinetochores are another component of mitotic and meiotic spindles. These protein complexes allow microtubules to attach to the centromere, which is the DNA sequence in the center of a chromosome that holds duplicated chromatids together. Once kinetochores attach microtubules to centromeres, microtubules can pull apart the sister chromatids. Okay. Snap your oxygen tanks on, cause we're taking a quick gander outside to look at some external microtubule structures. These structures are called motile structures, because they are involved in cell movement. We'll take a look at two types, cilia and flagella, but note that only certain types of cells have motile structures. This silly crew member riding the small spikes on the spaceship represents cilia. Cilia are hair-like structures made of microtubules. They move materials on the surface of the cell. Cilia are commonly found in respiratory epithelial cells, where they help clear mucus out of the lungs. Eukaryotic flagella are longer, tail-like structures made of microtubules that allow an entire cell to move. Not all cells have flagella. They're only found in cells that need to travel, like sperm. We've represented flagella with these flags trailing behind a tail-like space structure. Notice the 9 and the 2 in that rocket's propulsion and reactor label? They represent the 9 plus 2 microtubule structure of eukaryotic cilia and flagella. Both structures are made of a ring of 9 pairs of microtubules, which is actually 18 total tubes, with 2 tubules running through their middle. Alrighty. That spider looks pretty hungry, and I've read enough fantasy books to know where this is going, so... Let's review and wrap up before she gets any ideas. First, microfilaments are bundles of actin protein that are mostly found near the cell membrane. These structures are dynamic. They provide structural support to keep a cell from compressing or breaking under pressure. ATP-powered myosin interacts with microfilaments to create cellular movement, like muscle contractions. Actin-myosin interactions also create the cleavage furrow, which causes cytokinesis during cell division. Next, there's intermediate filaments, which are dispersed throughout a cell and are static. They also provide structural support and make the cell more rigid. These filaments also hold organelles in place so they don't drift all over the cytosol. Lastly, there's microtubules, which are made of tubulin protein. They provide structure to the interior of the cell, but are dynamic, especially during cell division. Microtubules create a network of pathways throughout the cell. Kinesin and dynein are two motor proteins that carry molecules along this network to move materials throughout the cell. The centrosome contains two centrioles, which organize the cell's microtubule network. Centrioles are made up of nine microtubule triplets. Centrioles are also crucial for cell division. They organize mitotic and meiotic spindles, which allows microtubules to connect to each chromosome's kinetochore so sister chromatids can be pulled into separate daughter cells. Lastly, microtubules create external motile structures on some cells, like cilia and flagella. 
These structures are made of a ring of nine pairs of microtubules, with two microtubules running through the middle. So, there you have it. Cytoskeletons covered, and I'm still here to talk about it.